Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, sports and performance nutritionist, and welcome back to my channel, especially when today we're gonna to be talking about that topic that a lot of you are doing on Zwift or indoors or outdoors at the moment whilst COVID is rampant, and that is, of course, Everesting. Hitting over 8,000 meters on your own, repeating the same hill climb until you've completed the amount of elevation gain as the same as Everest. And as you can imagine, there's a huge amount of potential pitfalls and things that could go wrong over such an event. Many of you will be doing this between 12 and 15 hours, maybe longer, maybe a bit quicker if you are really that fast. But as you can imagine, that would be considered an ultra endurance event. And that's something I'm pretty good at. So today we're gonna to go through all the pitfalls and things that you may be doing and not aware of, and then the things that we can do to counter those and ensure that you can Everest. Let's roll that intro. What are the things that you could be doing wrong that may hinder your potential success in doing an Everest attempt? Now there are many considerations that you need to think of for such an event. And first and foremost, it's really important to understand that to maintain exercise output, you need to maintain blood glucose levels. And there's an iconic study in the 1986, I believe, by Coyle, and showed that anything above two hours, you need to take on carbohydrate to maintain exercise performance. Now this is obviously carried over into all events, and the only time Ketosis might be worthwhile is if you know exercise intensity isn't going to go above a certain point. And in Everesting, I can tell you that's not going to be this event, unless you're probably doing it over a climb that's only like 3% gradient, which is very low and you're going to be riding for a very long time. Well, there is five easy areas for us to cover and go over to help you with this. Pitfall number one, no practice. Now, I'm not saying go out and practice an Everest, but I'm saying practice your food. I'm saying go out and do four, six hour ride, something like 100 miles or similar, especially if it's quite bumpy. But you need to get used to consuming a lot of carbohydrate per hour whilst working hard for that kind of duration. Now, obviously you're not gonna go practice riding Everest, but you will go out for a long ride. And getting used to taking on around 80 grams an hour, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, will make a big factor in your performance. So practice comes down to a few different things. The day before, the morning of, what you're having during, and then potentially afterwards. But that's less important because the event will be done. Practice is really important. Practice is gonna be the reason why you succeed and making sure that you have tried and tested the foods that you're gonna be having, the amounts you're gonna be having per hour, will be the reason why you succeed in this event. It's a really easy and quick thing to think of, but often forgotten about. So, first point is to practice what you're gonna be eating on the day. And make sure it's comfy, make sure it feels good, and make sure you're not getting any gastrointestinal discomfort or stomach issues from it. Point two, having a low fiber diet. Or the opposite, if you're eating high fiber, it's not gonna be good for you. This is for a few different reasons. Reason number one is that having a low fiber diet for about four days before your event will reduce your body weight by about one kilo, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, depends on the size of the individual. It's obviously gonna make it easier to climb a mountain or hill or whatever you're doing to achieve that height because less weight makes climbing easier. Everybody knows that. The next point is high fiber diets are gonna slow down digestion. So if you're having lots of high fiber foods on the day, you're gonna very quickly feel full and then potentially feel some discomfort in your stomach, which may even lead to more non-enjoyable parts. So, Maintaining a low fiber diet, which is considered 15 grams or less in the lead up to this event and on the day will make a really big difference in how you feel and how you perform. 
Point number three, a poor carb load. So many people wing it, have pizza, have a big night out, have big pasta binge or something like this on the day before. And I have done a video, link in the corner, to carb loading. And it's something that you should definitely practice along with that big ride that I said to practice for this event. If you are gonna go out for 100 miles, six hours or so, then you practicing a carb load the day before would be worthwhile to make sure, one, that you get the right amounts, two, you pick foods that agree with you, and three, that you feel good in the morning. It seems simple, once again, but practicing that carb load will reap the rewards on the day. Making sure that you're getting high glycemic index foods, that you're eating 10 grams per kilogram body weight of carbohydrate, and avoiding, once again, high fiber foods and things like red meat, which do slow down digestion, and will still be sitting in you the next day. Carb loads have been shown to improve performance, especially in ultra endurance events, and I can't tell you how integral they are for you performing well and just feeling good for this kind of thing. So once again, practice your carb load, work out the foods that you want, and the foods that agree with you, and will be available wherever this kind of hill or mountain that you're doing it up. Point four. This one's a really good point, and it's often quite easily forgotten after you've had a carb load, which is the breakfast and morning of meal. Essentially the meal that you have two to four hours before this event. Now, carbohydrate loading is all about storing as much muscle glycogen as you can, and that's going up and up and up. And whilst you're asleep, that's not gonna change. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna disappear. But what does disappear or go is liver glycogen. And liver glycogen empties out through the night to maintain blood glucose levels. But this means that when you wake up, that it is empty. And liver glycogen stores has a direct relationship with maintaining blood glucose levels. And as we said at the beginning, maintaining blood glucose levels is super important in you being able to maintain exercise output. So making sure that we get a meal that replaces this before the event is super important. So my recommendation to you guys is to have one to two grams per kilogram body weight of carbohydrate two to four hours before the event to replenish liver glycogen stores. I would recommend the lower to moderate GI carbohydrates as there is research to show that high GI carbohydrates, this kind of duration before an event, can speed up the rate at which you use carbohydrate. What kind of choices would I have? Well, I would go for something that you enjoy, something that you have regularly, and I would have a mixture of different foods, with some of them being fructose based. That could just be some banana, or some honey, maple syrup, or some fruit juice to go alongside the meal. This is because fructose does get stored primarily in the liver, and would just aid in the amount that you get in there a bit quicker. So to round that up, Two to four hours before the event, you're having a solid carbohydrate meal to replace liver glycogen stores to ensure you're able to maintain blood glucose levels during exercise, especially of this duration. Now lastly, point five. This one's particularly interesting and quite controversial because it's a bit ambiguous in a sense. And what we're talking about here is exercise intensity. Now. Many of you may do different gradients of hill to climb to repeat to achieve this event or this Everest. Some of you may do a 5% climb and others may do more of a hefty one of 15 to 20% which is a lot harder. And obviously that kind of climb is going to be a lot more intense, it's going to be a lot shorter but a lot more intense. And with exercise intensity going up, also heart rate goes up and so does power output and the zone that you work in. And as exercise intensity comes up, we draw a lot of blood away from our stomach. And this goes into the muscles that are obviously working and also over our skin to help cool us down if it is hot. So as blood comes away from our stomach, digestion gets impaired. We're not able to quickly take on that nutrient or those nutrients, those carbohydrates, and we can get gastrointestinal discomfort. So if you are doing a higher percentage gradient hill, 
to achieve this Everest. It may be worthwhile considering the strategy at which you utilize or take on your carbohydrate. I, in my advice, would say don't have it literally just before you go up or during going up. I would have it when you get to the top and when you're coming down the hill or as you arrive at the bottom and having a couple of minutes or so possibly 15 which would be ideal because it takes around 15 minutes for blood glucose levels to peak after ingestion of carbohydrate. And this means that you'll have digested it, blood glucose levels are being elevated and you're not focusing on digesting something whilst you're working really hard and just pushing up this big gradient hill. So that's it, that's my five tips for you guys doing Everesting. They are obviously the pitfalls and also the things that you can do to counter them and get the most out of the event that you're training for and wanting to achieve. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've Everested or if you're planning to do one and where you're gonna do it and if this video helped you. Now guys, do subscribe to the channel. I do really appreciate it. Many of you watching this have not yet, so hit that subscribe button. Why haven't you? And I'll see you guys again soon. Remember, as always, fuel for the work required. Tune in again soon, and it's bye from me.